we're going to talk now a bit about how we should take notes. And this is where I've got, like I said, these really practical tips. This was a fascinating book that I read um, called Taking Minutes of Meetings. I didn't read all of it. I read the relevant. Um, and this, I thought, was brilliant because it's not a study skills book. I've put a bibliography slide at the end of this that will show you the main text that I look, looked at when I was when I was researching for this workshop. But and most of them were study skills books. This one really stood out to me because it's a very practical guide that was talking about taking being a minute taker in a meeting. And it really made me think how much this skill is a practical work based skill as well as a practical study based skill. So I said earlier that I take notes when I am when I am a participant in a meeting. This book was aimed at people who are taking formal minutes in a meeting, um, which is obviously an incredibly um, skilled thing to do and a very specific aspect of people's jobs. And, and, and that might form part of your, your roles in the future. It might not. It's likely that, um, I would think that most job roles that you go into at some point, you will need to think about what someone else is saying and maybe make a record of it. Um, so this skill that we're developing as we're studying really does and really does does apply to real world jobs out there. And like I say, I, I'm always taking notes in meetings when I when I go to them. I've got um, I've got my lovely notebook. I've talked about this before in sessions that lets me um, wipe down the pages afterwards and start afresh. So they're not even um, they're not to be kept forever. But they are notes. They do help me um, with my memory and <laughs> with my understanding. So this book, like I say, was talking about these really, really practical tips. And this first one made me smile a little bit about maintaining concentration. So this acknowledgement that sometimes we are in a meeting or a lecture or a seminar um, or reading an article. It's not totally riveting uh, to, our, to our mind. Um, everything's riveting to somebody. Um, any topic will be very interesting to somebody, but we're all different. And you may find yourself sat in a lecture um, or other form of learning activity and you're not interested in what's going on. And the but it might still be really important. So these are some tips for maintaining your concentration. So the first one is to maximize your understanding of the topic being talked about in the book that I was reading that was um, focused on looking at the agenda like it's talking about meetings so looking at the agenda getting key information before you start in a study setting that's doing your pre-reading if you've been given pre-reading for a lecture or a seminar then make sure you do that because the more you can maximize your understanding of what's going on the easier you will find it to maintain concentration if you're if you're not understanding what's going on, it's more easy for your mind to wander and think, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not understanding this. I'm not going to listen right now. So do that pre-reading. Try as much as you can to maximize your understanding of what's being talked about. Sip cold water. That was, I thought, a good tip. Um, it's good to be hydrated anyway. But um, making sure you've got a, a, a cold drink that can help maintain that concentration. This, I thought, again, really interesting. Sit forward looking at those who are speaking. So that body language um, can really help. It will help you, the people think that you look interested and engaged. And it will also tell your mind that you are interested and engaged. If you're sitting forward looking at who, the person who's speaking, it's much more in, easy to maintain your concentration than if you're sat back out the window. Um, sit up with your pen ready to write so again like I was saying in meetings when I clock out in a meeting I will put my pen down and probably sit back um, and that will be me clocked out but if I'm sat up I've got my pen ready then that's giving my brain these cues that actually I need to be concentrating on this and use the breaks that are available to you so um, this I think is particularly important in the context of studying online or having um, teaching delivered to you online if you've got a break from your session you've been staring at the screen think about how you're using that break um is it the most appropriate thing you can ask yourself to then scare, stare at another screen so you might pick up your phone i'm terrible for doing this uh, but using your phone in a break will it's still that eye strain it's still looking at a screen so think about how you're studying um and how you're going to use the breaks that are available to you. If you're an in-person session, um, what are you going to use that break time? And again, it might come down to something as, as 
as straightforward as are you an introvert or an extrovert? Where do you get your energy from? If you will get more energy from talking to the people around you, then do that. If you will get more energy from going on a quick walk on your own and do that. Think about how to to make best use of that break for you. And that will help you maintain concentration when the session starts again. The next practical considerations. Um, so again, this is this is this is real physical stuff. Experiment to find a good pen or pencil. We're going to talk in a minute about the advantages and disadvantages of pen and pencil versus electronic. Um, so so we're going to get onto that in a second. But if you are using um, pen and paper or pencil and paper, do some experiments to find a nice pen or pencil that works for you. Move in towards the table um, so that weight of your arm is taken just below your elbow. So that, again, it's, it's from this book that I was reading. It's a practical tip for how to make that more comfortable. And then this last point, consider using different colours, symbols, the layout of your notes to differentiate what you're writing about. So you might want to differentiate references, points for your assignment, and you can do that in the layout of your notes or what colour you're using or what symbols you're using. And the next thing we're going to do is look at some examples of what that might look like. So I'm going to share my screen with you again, but hopefully now you can see we're back on that note taking guide. So here in the right hand side, we've got a box called resources and we've got these two examples. I'm just going to talk through what's available here. Um, We've got the table method and a mind map method, just as two examples of how you might organize your notes. The table method, we've got an example, a filled out example, and that's available as a PDF and a, work document, a Word document. That's for accessibility reasons so that it's available in different formats so that people, um, if you do need to change the font size, anything like that, um, you've got the Word document that you can do that for. PDF there so that if that's the easiest thing for a screen reader or example, you can use the PDF. That's why there's two different um, formats of that. And we've also got a template of that table method. So that's a blank te template. That's just in Word because obviously you'll be wanting to fill it out as a template. And again, the mind map example is in PDF and Word document format so that like I said, you can do with it whatever you need to to make that document accessible to you. Um, so this is that first one, the table example. And this format is, as you can see, it uses a table to help you organize your notes. So we've got four columns here. The first one is the date. Um, that can be useful because it can help you keep track of, um, of, of when you've done something. It will help you keep track, for example, of seminars, what date they happened. Um, and it will really help when you're going back to your notes to be able to, if you um, know that you took notes about something on a particular day, you'll be able to go back and see the date. Subject, so brief subject of the of the note, so what topic the note is about. You've then got your note itself. Sorry, the um things are appearing every time I move the mouse, aren't they? You've got your a box for, for the note, so the note that you're making. Um, and the final one is a citation. So in this example, we've just got a short citation. I'm going to talk later about making sure you record full bibliographic details. Um, but this table example has got a short citation so that you know where the information comes from. So if you go through this document in full, which, like I say, you can do, you can download it from our skills guide. You can read all the notes here because that gives you uh, useful information as you go. But as you can see, it's all filled out as an example, um, all our different topics. So we can easily see and get back to the different topics that we might have taken notes on. Put your full note there. And you've got your reference that you can follow back on. And this, I think, is a lovely point at the end. Um, you don't need to just use your notes to record things that you, you are learning, things that you're reading, things that you're listening to. Um, you can use notes to remind yourself of achievements that you've, that you've had. And that can, again, be a really good thing to look back on to see um, what, what you've achieved or anything else, that, um, key points as you go through your studies. Second example is a mind map. So again, people work in very different ways. Um, I love bullet points. I love bullet points. I would do absolutely everything in bullet points if I could. I probably wouldn't use a table so much because I, that doesn't appeal to me. And a mind map really doesn't appeal to me. I would be using bullet points. But lots of people are very visual, and you might find that something like a mind map really helps. So here, the topic for the example is things I need for university. 
And the first thing that's happened is um, the person's written subject in the middle of the page and then just everything that occurs around the um, around that topic to get it all down on paper to capture all those thoughts. And then as a second step in the process, you can use dotted lines to connect words that link to other words or topics that link to other words. So here we've used dotted lines to connect pencils with a calculator with pens or that stationary. That's all a similar concept. And then you can see in the rewrite of the mind map that's pulled together under the category stationary with calculator pens, pencils coming out of it. So this is a really good way to initially capture all the information that you want to to do or the notes you want to make and then pull it together. Those other steps we were talking about to organize your thoughts to start creating your arguments. So this is obviously a very practical um, example, things I need for university, but it will apply to, to concepts and thoughts and um, research papers and all those things can be thought about in this way. So anyone have any thoughts on 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 that does anyone want to share how they take notes any tips they've got any practical tips when you're taking notes alex have we got any tips coming through yes there's a few tips that have just come through um so first of all um we have uh, to use powerpoints uh, we've got key keywords and phrases surrounding the subject um writing in bullet points uh, trying to use a strategy called the active recall strategy, says uh, Lydia. I hope I said that right. Um, what What is the active recall strategy? Yes. That as well. um, Steph says, handwritten notes help me to retain information much better than typing. Um, but typing is really a lot quicker. Uh, I, I find that uh, handwritten notes work for me as well, although I have gone to typing now just to get everything in one place and to help it be organised. Deirdre agrees with that and has said uh, is if we're going to talk about electronic versus pen and paper that's true there we go it's smooth you see smooth um i thought we could use the function that alex told me about in the um timekeeping um session last week so and if you click on that it will let you do a pointer and then you can vote with your pointer you can hear from my voice how pleased i am with this tool and like I say, if you're in the session last week, you'll have heard me being very pleased about it then. And I am still very pleased about it. Um, and this can give us, like I say, a real visual way of seeing what what everyone thinks. So I think we're edging towards pen and paper here. We've got a few on electronic. It's a really fascinating, top fascinating topic. And I've got um, I've got some thoughts on the next slide. Alex, was there anything else coming through in the chat that you wanted to highlight? Yes, there actually, there's two more ideas that I'd like to highlight. Um, first of all, it was said that uh, to leave spaces where you've missed taking a note. Um, <laughs> oops, I just removed. Um, but oh, so you can go helps. back and add notes yeah. in, you mean? But put a word that helps you to remember what you've wanted to put there. So like if the lecturer has just changed the slide, just leave a space, but put like a word that helps you to rem remember that, which I think is really useful. Especially mm. for handwritten notes, because electronically, one of the reasons why I now use electronic is because I can go back and edit the notes and copy and paste them elsewhere. Um, and secondly, Dave said to use OneNote for everything because of the cloud access and you can divide it into notebooks and modules. Um, and yeah, I agree with that. Um, I've just had a comment as well from Ilma, hopefully I said that right again, who said, I've used both pen and paper plus Microsoft Word for lectures, but now apps such as Zotero and Notion seem very appealing due to like the content. And Lydia agreed that she uses Notion a lot. Notion, I've not heard of Notion. Do t tell us in the chat. I'm going to talk through the next slide. Someone who's used Notion, describe that and what it does in the chat, and then Alex can report back once I've been through my next slide. So these were my thoughts on pen and paper um versus electronic and also i say my thoughts um plus one that um that we i read in, in the books that i read advantages of pen and paper so this came up right at the beginning when we were talking about the reasons why we take notes someone said this in the chat and um, so that link between the hearing and physically writing it can help you process the information and remember it so there's a real power to um the number of times you process information so you process it by hearing it you process it again by writing it and then you process it again by rereading it so that um that physical writing out can really help you with that 
when you're using pen and paper and it's just not the same it just doesn't do it i think in the same way if you're using um, electronic note taking this i thought was a really important point and it was one that came from that that book on taking minutes in meetings because note taking is but with pen and paper is slower it's slower so you can't keep up with the speech you cannot write down everything you're hearing so you're forced to only note the key information so it makes you summarize it makes you pick out the important things rather than just mindlessly writing out what you're hearing um, and I suppose that's not so so relevant if you're reading, but certainly if you are taking notes in a lecture. Um, I think that's a really interesting point um, that speed is not necessarily the most important thing. It is slower and that can be a real advantage if you're using pen and paper and can be easy to type up afterwards. So this again came from that book on minute taking and the idea being if you've got paper in front of you, you can easily leaf through it to find points you can move it around so you can um take a page that you've finished i'm holding my paper now you can't see me but i've now got notes in front of me that i'm demonstrating with you can take a page and put it aside once you know you've got everything from that page in a way that you can't electronically um, so that can make it easier if you're organizing your notes after the fact it can be easier to organize if they are on paper in front of you but then there are advantages of electronic notes so, um, and there's this thing about speed if you're finding that you are missing information because you, you're not writing quickly enough to keep up with what's being said then typing is usually faster than writing again it depends on um, what kind of typer you are but um, usually it's faster to type than it is to write. and you can then use a search function to easily find keywords so if your notes are in a word document or i'm sure all these fantabulous apps that i hope you're telling us about in the chat um, you can search through those easily to find keywords and really quickly get to different topics and you can store your notes securely so you can save them to the cloud and then double save them to a USB stick um, or, or whatever you want to do with those um, notes. They're a lot harder to lose. As long as you do save, they're a lot harder to lose than paper notes, which you might misplace by leaving on a bus um, or other example of where you might leave notes. So definite advantages to both those types. And again, sometimes it's just a case of experimenting and seeing what works more easily for you. Alex, did we have an explanation of that app just quickly? Yes, from the sounds of it, we've got quite a, new, quite a number of people interested, including myself, in using the app. Uh, so thank you to Lydia for explaining what Notion is. So just to say what, just to say what uh, Lydia said. So she says, Notion is a basically a life organizing app you can not only make your notes, but you can also use the calendar feature, share your notes with other people, create a lot of sub pages so that your notes don't look overwhelming. Um, mm -hmm. Lydia said that she started using it not that long ago and she's still learning, but it's absolutely amazing. She used to use OneNote and she prefers Notion. So thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, other people have passionately said it's amazing. Um, Apparently, you usually do need to pay for it, but it's free for us. So by us, I assume you mean students or University of Derby students. That's Ooh. quite cool. So I'm going to uh, have a look at that after the workshop. Well, no, tomorrow. Alex's task for tomorrow is to look into that. 